Hey everybody, I'm Jairo Harak, and today I'm going to be talking about my testimony, so let's get started. Well, being a daughter of a pastor is a lot of fun, um, but you do go through a lot of persecution and a lot of, you know, complications because there's always going to be somebody out there to criticize or say a judgment. And being a daughter of a pastor isn't easy. Everybody thinks that being a daughter of a pastor is an easy job and an easy position, when it's really not. But I, I wouldn't you know, traded being a daughter of a pastor for anything else because, you know, it has really helped me, given me a stable environment, given me, you know, a great childhood, given me, you know, God, which is most important in life. So I wouldn't trade in being a daughter of a pastor for something else, but definitely being a daughter of a pastor isn't an easy job. Just anybody in general to just come out there and just say something to try to get you down or just you know try to put in opposition to whatever God has in your life because daughters of and, and children of pastors in general you know whether it's you know a girl or a boy or both because I have a, an older brother as well um, but you know we 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 love what we do and we we love doing it and you know it you know, like I said, it's not an easy job, you know, we, we, we're we being raised the right way because, you know, we we have that stable environment, we have that great childhood, we're still learning, we'll, we're still growing, but you know what, we still have God with us, and I think it's a big privilege to be able to say, you know, I'm a daughter of a pastor, I know, you know, what it's like for, you know, to go through a lot of things, but still have God in the center of our lives and be able to have God through it all. And, you know, I, I just feel so happy that I get to be able to say, you know, I have God. I, you know, he's helped me through good times and bad. And, you know, like I said, I have an older brother as well. So, you know, we have, you know, our ministries, uh, but we work together. And I think that's the most important thing. I mean, like I said, we're still growing. We're still learning. But we're still, you know, in the in the vision of God. And like I said, there's always going to be somebody trying to put in opposition to your ministry, to what you're going to do. Because as children of pastors, we, we have that responsibility to be that generation, that new generation that are in that, you know, carry that legacy that our parents are going to give to us. And we're going to be probably the future pastors. And then we have to show that to our future kids. So, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's hard work, it's not easy, but you know what, God is always there with us, and I, I wouldn't trade in, you know, this decision for anything else. I've had many good experiences, you know, many good experiences being the daughter of a pastor. I mean, I've been able to really, you know, like, it, there's so many families out there that, you know, they so many people that they go through so many things you know like I, I didn't have my father when I was little or I didn't have my mother and, and that's really some things that you know are really sad and I feel like you know I, I'm glad to say that I had both of my parents you know when I was little and what now you know and that I had God with me because not everybody not everybody grows up in a Christian atmosphere and in, in a Christian home and in a Christian environment so I feel like you know I had the privilege to be able to say I have two parents I have you know an older brother I have a church I have God and and we just have to pray for those people who were you know not as fortunate enough to be able to you know have that family setting in their household because you know all they need is just Jesus you know the love of Jesus to just take care of them because most of those families they don't know what it's like to have love they don't know what it's like to go to church they don't they or they once went to church but they were hurt once before and you know they're they're kind of like in the decision whether you know should I go this way or should I go the other way but those less fortunate people those are the ones that we really need to pray for and I think that's that's what we're all called to do and you know I but I'm very fortunate and privileged to say you know what I, I grew up in that Christian environment I, I know what's right from wrong I know what you know God has for me we're not perfect because children of pastors aren't perfect people expect them to be perfect but like I said just because we're raised and grew up in church doesn't mean that we're perfect people because none of us are perfect people 
people, but we do have to seek the perfection of God. So I've had many great experiences, you know, being a daughter of a pastor and just being a human being in general, you know, just being a girl and, <laughs> and I'm 13 years old. So I'm, I'm excited because, you know, God doesn't care about age differences or, or anything like that. He just cares about, you know, your relationship with him and your ministry. And I think that's the most important thing ever. <laughs> I have said my bullying story before, but I am going to re-say it um, as part of my testimony. I was bullied before in school and in fifth grade, and I know it's not easy, but uh, it wasn't cyberbullying. It was, you know, you know, real bullying, like, you know, real live bullying. And, you know, it, it wasn't easy. I went through a lot of persecution, not just, a, you know, not just as you know a pastor's daughter because like i said pastor's kids we go through persecution we go through so many things but we're glad to be where we are thanks to god but i went through persecution in school as well so it's kind of hard to be able to say i've went through persecution twice or i've been through persecution more than once and you know it's but i have and you know but it was hard for me i i know what it's like to feel like you're in a group you know you're in a classroom you're with a group of friends but you feel totally alone i know what it feels like to go through that i know what it's like to feel alone and only feel like you have god because you know in your family and your church because at school you're you know you have no friends i know what it's like and in the ministry sadly there's not always going to be friends you can't always trust anyone I mean, the only one you could basically trust is God and your family. And you have to even be careful with, you know, who's your friends. I mean, God sometimes separates you from your friends because they don't have the same vision that you have. And there could, they could be an obstacle in your way through your ministry. Because God, you know, processes us through so many different ways. And, you know, he, he does so many different things that, you know, baby... When he has that, you know, perfect plan for you, that destiny for you, maybe those friends are going to stop it from happening. So God has to sometimes separate you from your friends to be able to do that will and that purpose in your life. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, I've had to, you know, God has separate, separated me from my friends. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that because I'd rather be with God and have God and have my ministry and have church and have family than, you know, have a friend that's going to stop me and be in opposition and be an obstacle in my way. So it's not that we don't have friends, but you can't always trust anyone. I mean, you just have to look for revelation and seek vision of God. So... I think that's the most important thing but yeah I've been through bullying I know like I said I know what it's like to feel alone and only feel like you have God and that there's nobody else to trust I know what it's like to feel embarrassed every day of your life um, you know in, in school and I know what it's like to feel frustrated and, and feel you know humiliated and feel very sad but you know what through all of that through through the persecution through this bullying story through through all of this bullying process that I went through even though it was hard yes I cried yes I had pain yes I, I you know I was going through trials but you know what I had God and and God was is my salvation and God was that thing, that person that took me out of so much and I'm eternally grateful to him because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here right now. You should see so many children, so many teens that they're making wrong decisions because they go through bullying, because they go through cyberbullying, because they go through rejection, and they're doing so many wrong decisions that it's just, you can't even look at the news anymore because you see so much corruption in this world. So yeah, we just need to pray for those kids who are going through all that bullying, those teens who are going through so much bullying and they don't have that plan of salvation and we are the ones that need to give it to them before it's too late. But I am privileged and happy to say that when I went through bullying, when I went through persecution, when I went through judgments and criticisms, I have God. 
and I still do and and you know what that's the most important thing in my life and in the world because without God we're nothing without God we wouldn't have a ministry without God we wouldn't be here so you know I have you know how do you say that privilege and that honor and and just that that satisfaction and guarantee that I have God with me and he was there with me all the time and he protected me from all of the wrong that you know was going out on you know in the world and and from and protecting me from all that wrong that was going on in the school and I'm happy to say that you know that God protected me God was there God didn't forget about me like other people think God was always there with us he's always gonna be here with us he will never forsake us and you know I'm, I'm I just want to give you guys an advice whether you're being bullied just don't give up and just you know trust in God and you know if, if you're a, a pastor's kid just don't give up either just you know trust in God just stay in your position because if you've been through hurt or, or circumstances or whatever you've been through it doesn't really matter just you know don't let your position be taken away by somebody else you know you're always going to be going back to royalty and always going to go sit at the table with the master and if you're just a person looking for God you know don't give up because you're going to find him seek and you will find him so that's my advice for you guys today thank you for watching this video and i just want to extend this you know ad you know this calling to you guys and say you know what just surrender yourself to god because he is the solution he is whatever you need he's not going to leave you alone even when you feel like it so thank you guys for watching god bless you guys